prime for checking dish. This is your dishing tool. This one's a Park Tool WAG-4 Professional Wheel Alignment Gauge. Basically, you can start on any side. You can use three-point contact. These sliding blocks, we're gonna get these to measure up on just on the ends of or outer diameter perimeter of your rim. So you can slide them. So you could leave your tube or tire on there. We can just slide these to get it on. Make contact on the two sides, the outside perimeter, and then we're gonna lower this level down, make contact with the end of the hub. And it's gonna be the end of the hub where it's gonna be, if it were to touch the inside of your fork or dropouts. And then once we got that set, we got three points of contact. You could even lift it up, take a peek, make sure there's no daylight under your right foot, your left foot, and then the center. Once that looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, place it back down, make the same points of contact, and you're either gonna have a spacing on one of the footings. It could be the left or the right. It's not gonna mean that right or left side of the wheel needs repair, it's basically as a whole. And then if we have a spacing at the footing, or it may be over at the middle, the middle gauge here. If the gap is at the center, where this gauge is, we're gonna be tightening the spokes on the opposite side. So if you have a wheel that's uh, 32 spokes, we're gonna be tightening 16 spokes on the opposite side. Uh, but if you're following the park toolbook, it wants you to reset this on the same side. So if I have a gap here, I'm gonna open this up, push this lever down, keep my finger on the top, turn the knob. Because as I'm turning the knob, it wants to move this lever or this gauge. So pressure down, turn the knob, tighten, three points of contact. And you're gonna do it just exactly what I did. Reset it on that same side, flip it over, and that gap that you had at the center should now be at the footing on one of these sides here. So if we're seated in the correct spot, uh, if you got a regular wheel with a quick release, it's, you're gonna sit it on the lock nut. Again, where the nut's gonna be making contact with the inside of the frame, not the actual top edge of the axle. It's gonna give you a bad reading. We should have a gap over here. So that means I can teeter-totter if I push down on this thumb I can make this go up, down, left, right, up, down. So if your dishing tool, you had that spacing at the outer edge, which is gonna be just easier overall to understand which side of the wheel you're gonna to have to tighten. So again, this is gonna be the left side if you're sitting on the bike or the non-drive side. So if we had a gap on this side, the left side, the non-drive side, at the rim itself, then we're gonna be tightening every spoke on the non-drive side. So you would find a marker. Usually it's gonna be your valve hole. Valve hole sitting right here. Every spoke that is gonna be laced to the farthest left side of your hub. In this case, it's gonna be closer to your rotor if you have a rotor, um, or it's gonna be called the flange inside here. Uh, that's where the other end of the spoke is gonna to connect to. So you got your left side, got your right side. So every spoke closest to your left side. So it's gonna be every other spoke. So here's my valve hole. Located my valve hole, where the valve is from your tube is gonna go through the hole of the rim. And then closest to it, coming this direction, is the first spoke that is closest to the left side flange. Right over here, I'm gonna skip a spoke because that next spoke actually connects to the right side closest to me. So we wanna hit everything on this side, so every other spoke, so skip spoke, boom. So say this wheel is 24 spokes, we're gonna do 12 spokes on this side, every other spoke. That's going to move this wheel, the rim, actually we're calling this the rim, our spoke, and we have our hub in the middle. It's actually gonna rotate or move this rim that direction so if there's a gap here, it's gonna decrease that space and we're gonna basically split that difference. So say we had a gap of four millimeters, we're gonna cut that in half. We only want this rim to move two millimeters. That way we don't overshoot it and create a problem on the other side of this.